the real next level to this ministry, one say, well, what's the end time plan? Or what's the plan? Well, that's what we're learning right now. We're learning what the plan is by studying the scripture and keeping the Shabbat. You know what I mean? And, and redeeming the time. In other words, using our time wisely. Using our resources wisely. Not just our money, our dollars and cents. Although we have to use our money, our dollars and cents also wisely, as well as learn to pool our resources, learn to work together. Without doing that, the real achievement of the goal or the goals are impossible, are impossible. This is not a ministry of one. This is not a service of one. It's not a will. Well, it's a will of the one, but we all are involved in. But the main, the main word is trust. The main word is this, this word right here is faith. This is why the Bible focuses so much on faith. Now, we say faith, Bamarinya, is in net, right? And this will be I, this will be M, this will be N, and ne, E, we can put there for the ne sound, and this would be T. So this is I, me. We don't put a vowel here because the I. The I is not a usual vowel in the Angles language, in the so-called English language. So it's an I sound. So it's im, imnet or imnet, im, im, m, m, imnet. And imnet means subjective. What does that mean, subjective? See, we got to understand the object and the subject. Could we say, okay, read the Bible? But then some people don't know how to read. But do you comprehend what you read? Because therefore it's reading comprehension. How are we comprehending what we're reading? So the answers are already there. In other words, before us, the answer is right there. Like on the old X file, they would say the truth is out there. But the, but the truth is out there. It's right in front of our face. The Gnostic Christ says if we're able to see what is before us, that which is hidden from us, will become evident, will become clear, will be revealed. You know, people looking in, in a whole bunch of secret places, want to learn about the secret society, right, and the secret societies. Well, look around at what's going on in the world. Look, at what, look, look what's happening right in front of our eyes. Some things are right in front of us. I mean, what more secret? People say, I can't believe that happened. Well, because you're an unbeliever. You understand? Oh, I can't accept that. You understand? Because you're vain and arrogant. If this is the reality, this is the reality. We think that we have to subjectively, you understand, determine the reality around us. No, 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 no. See, that's why these issues right here are faith. So when we talk about, well, where do we go from here? How do we bring the machibar how do we bring the society together? How do we work together? How, to, how do we work progressively together? The first thing is the teaching. The first thing is the teaching. You know, people say, well, well I like to work with the society. Or I like to work with the, the island. Well, give thanks. Those who sincerely have made that, that proclamation or that statement, made that intent, that good intent revealed, I and I is still praying on it, and may you pray on it, but we need to also work out our salvation. See, this is the key. And the root right here is faith. Now, in the world, what do they call faith? In the world, what do they call faith? Let's make an hour right here, right? Bring this down, and let's go over here. They call this word trust. You remember after 9-11, the, the, the day that changed everything? They say 9-11 changed everything. Well, 9-11 was Ethiopia's New Year. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, the, the whole connection, right? Well, 9-11-2001 changed everything. But we heard these people on the news, you know, the, the Gentiles or, or the, the Babylonians or a lot of the white folks. Well, some black folks, you know, you, you know how it goes. You understand? But they were saying on the news, how do we build and rebuild trust, right? Notice what they said. How do we rebuild trust? Can you see this right here? Trust in our system. So let's put trust above system, right? How do we rebuild trust in the system? Because they say if we don't rebuild trust in the system, this right now would threaten to collapse our entire, our entire system. 
is based on trust. And for a moment, I almost couldn't believe myself what I was hearing. I said, wait, did you just hear what they said? They said that they have to, because 9-11 was so shocking, and unless they rebuild trust, you know what the next word they use? You know the next word, right? The next word is, um, let's put it over here, after trust, and is confidence. We broke it up like that. You understand? Not just the con part, but we say confid, like the confide. You understand? Confidence. How do, we, how do we rebuild confidence in our system? Sometimes they'll say, how do we rebuild confidence in our economic system? How do we rebuild trust in the political system? How do we rebuild trust in this kind of a system, the educational system, the business system, the legal system? But all the systems in Babylon is one system. And it's based on what some would have called the NWO, New World Order, which really the old world order. Remember, 1776? That's, that's, not, uh, not, uh, that's not 2011. That was 1776, what they called New World Order. Some would call it, um, you know, uh, Babylon, prophetically, Babylon, confusion, chaos. Some would call it the white supremacy. But Bible calls it the Gentile world system the Gentile world system. We call it GW, GW, GWP, GWP, the Gentile world powers. Now, well, like we said before, Shabbat Shalom. This is a Shabbat time. But this is a time for us to focus on the things of, of, of God in Christ. He gives us the rest from, from this world you know, or the worldliness. You understand? And, and the things of the world. Um, some even have taken um, what they call a digital Sabbath. There's some people who, because they have to work all the time or they're always around technology, they take a certain day and they shut off everything, you know, have a digital Shabbat. In other words, from whatever is their occupational labor, they take a break from that. So we're taking a break from some of the worldly things, even though we as similar to the priesthood, you understand? We are, we, we, in a sense, violate the Sabbath because we're teaching and preaching even on the Sabbath, so forth and so on. But that's why Christ said the priests are exempt from that, in that service, in that responsibility. You understand? So, you know, we can't be um, nitpicking, you understand, but we should be overstanding. Now, why we put this right here, because everything that we have to do from present to future in fulfilling the will of the King of Kings and his Christ is based on faith, scripturally, biblically speaking, the uh, Ritua Hymenot. And in the worldly sense, in the worldly sense, that's called trust. That's called trust. Or one can say confidence. You know what I'm saying? Confidence is another, is another um, synonym sort of a word to be used. Now, Bamarinya and them hark, this is Imnet right here. Now, Imnet, we put this down as the subjective, the subjective aspect. Now, in Amharic, we have the objective. What's the objective? The objective, let's, let's take this arrow down right here, right, since we explained that, and let's put ah, me, ne. Right, A M E N. And we're not talking about one's misunderstanding of um, so-called ancient Egypt, but it, it, isn't this interesting how this is all connected right here? If you go to Revelation three and fourteen, that the Christ, right, the Christ or the Moshiach, he says, "I am the what? I am the Amen. He is. He is the Amen." He is the Amen. Do you think that if Christ was there in the beginning, that the true and original Amen that the ancient Egyptians and Ethiopians were, as they say, worshiping, do you think that has anything to do with the Amen that we find in Revelation where he reveals that he is the beginning of the creation of God, the very beginning of the creation of God? What does the Bible state right here concerning the Amen? And 
there's, there's a point I, I hope those who are able to receive this receive it. Here in 314 to the church of the, the Lyodicians, to the church of the Lyodicians, to the angel of the church of the Lyodicians, right? Remember, Lyodicia, Ly, Lyodicia or the Dokia is the last of the seven churches, but it's the last of the seven church ages, and this is this present age that we are in. When his imperial majesty, the king of kings, Kedamawi Hala Selassie, was revealed and manifest, that was in the church of what they call Philadelphia. You know, we had the church of Philadelphia um, summing up brotherly love, summing up brotherly love and the revelation of Rastafari, that brotherly love. Now it says, right, these things say if the amen, the faithful, you notice that word again, faith, he's the faithful, he's not just has some faith, but he's the one who's full of faith. Scripture says that even if we deny him, even if we deny him, he can't de deny himself. You understand? He is faithful to himself. This is, this is why he is real. This is why he can do what he does. He is who he is. Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, notice what it says in verse 15 of Revelation. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. You see, this is the problem. This, this, this is the, the problem for some, but it's a challenge for, for all of I and I right now because there's many ones and ones who are not cold or hot about the truth, about Christ, about God, and speaking to I and I people about Rastafari in the teaching, the spirit, and the truth of his majesty. You see, because there's real works to be done in addition or building up on these teachings, you understand, and, and this revelation. This, this is not just to, okay, we're just talking about, okay, this in the Bible, that. There, there is a practical, you understand, there is practical application to almost everything that we are to learn in the teaching of his imperial majesty. His majesty, we can look at from an unbiased perspective, look at his life and his works, and we see the same faith that we're learning about, but we can see the practical application. But how was he able to do in 40 years, bring Ethiopia out of, what century was Ethiopia in? Virtually, it was, it was, it was almost in, you could say almost like the 15th, 16th century in a sense. You understand? Technologically, on other levels speaking. And he brought it into, into the modern 20th, 20th century. Some say even into the 21st century, into the new millennium. How was he able to do that? How was his majesty able to accomplish it? Some say, oh, it was because the white folks and the Europeans and the Queen of England. It's ridiculous. The Queen of England was a little girl when his majesty was already on the throne. So we can throw out that lie and that rubbish. It was because of the faith, faith in word and faith in action. So what we're learning here is the faith in word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, you see? and Christ even says to the faithful Jews, and this, this, this in John, John's gospel is the faithful Jews. He said that if, if you're in my Word, if you receive this Word, and we we'll receive this Word in the innermost of our inner, you understand, then, then God is in that Word, He is in that Word, and we all are one. That's the unity key, the unity key becoming of one mind. You know, you hear people say, well, everybody, that's just your opinion. Everybody got your, that their own opinion about things. And that's the reason why the world is so mashed up today with so many people saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, all these nominal Christians, and they can even tolerate the wickedness, the other wickedness that's happening at all levels. Go to church every Sunday and everything is fine and dandy, and they, and they wonder why things seem to be falling apart right now. Brothers and sisters, it's bound to get much worse before it gets better. But what do we do? We build our faith. We build up on our most holy faith. You understand? Faith in what? Word. The word is the beginning, and the word is the logic. The, 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 the word in the Greek, logos, or logia, logos, is the logic. You wonder why there's so much illogical things, things that make absolutely no sense happening? Can you imagine? One percent of the people control ninety-nine percent of the wealth. Isn't that illogical? Because it's not based on the word. 
You understand? It's not based on God's system, but the principles, notice this, this is interesting, the principles are the same. Because people have faith in the system, even the corrupt system, and they place their trust in it, and their subjective faith, the system continues to grind to the very end. This is why we say you cannot stop Babylon. All those people say, oh, we need to get guns and ammunition and, and stop Babylon, stop the new world. You can't stop it. You cannot stop it. And even to try to stop that is to oppose God. Because if you know the word, some things have to run its course. But I don't mean that we just sit around idly and we do nothing and we just, we, we just like wait for hell, death, and destruction, you understand, to come on us while we just have to just bide our time. You know, Bob Marley said, you know, some believe that we just sit aside and, and look and say, oh, we just got to fulfill the book. Well, yes, we got to fulfill the book. But in what way? In that active way. But we have to learn the logic and the scientia. Yes, there's science in the Bible. The word science, scientia, means, if you look it up, look it up. The word scientia is the, from the Latin. And the word scientia means knowledge. So every single time you see the word knowledge in the Bible, the Bible is speaking about science. Now, I know it's not according to your whitewash, white uh, uh, Gentile worldview, but that's the problem right there, in the Gentile worldview. Why do you think when we look at the economic crisis happening around the world, we see all these countries that are on the verge of economic collapse because something had, has changed. There was a, a game changer. That game changer, the one that changed the Babylonian game, is his imperial majesty. Unfortunately, they knew it. The Gentiles understood it before many of our own people. And some people still say, why we need Hyland? You know, why do we need him? You know, we have Christ, so forth and so on. But, but we have who's Christ? Do we have true Christ or we have antichrist? As long as you look at that whitewashed, blonde hair, blue-eyed image, you know what I'm saying? That's the Antichrist right there, and it's probably a lot of errors in the doctrine because they could fool you with that image, and you tolerate that false image. That means they probably also fooled you with a, a couple of ghosts, you know, put a little ghost and demon in it, and then you think that these are the saints and, you know, pudgy white fight, fat babies flying around in the air. This is the angel you're waiting for, a fat, pudgy white baby, you know, when pigs fly, they say, right? But let's get back to the subject matter, the subjective. The subjective is that part that we have. The objective is him. The objective is him. And to 83 Leaf, just a little point to 83 Leaf, give thanks. We really are appreciative. Don't, I, I really hope that you don't feel no way. You know, people might say, oh, because I asked tough questions, you beating up on me or what. No, 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 that was a good question. In fact, some of those type of questions are things that kind of go under the radar. Because some may really think like, oh, you're worshiping or, you, or you're serving two masters. You, you, you have two masters. Well, God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was mentioning God. Jesus said he came to bear witness to God, God the Father. Does that mean we have two masters? Does that mean that we have two masters? Of course not. Of course not. We have one master. We have one Lord our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and is his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie, that has redeemed the true gospel and the eternal gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one for many of us. So I don't know what your nationality or background or, or other kind of, you know, other kind of social psychology really is. But for many of us who grew up in the church, we, you know, we were in Christian, Negro, black families, which were very religious, holy rollers and all of that, and Pentecostals and this and that. It was always an imperial match that brought the reality to many of us. Some of us who said, we, we won't read, no. If that's what Christ is about, when we saw the counterfeit Christians and the nominal Christians, we said, if that's what Christ is about, we ain't dealing with it at all. And then we find his majesty or his majesty spirit finds us. And then we find our roots, the half of our story. And then we find his majesty speaking about Christ in a totally different way, a real way. Not just that he was speaking of it, but we can see the words of Christ manifesting in his, in his word and in his deed. 
And then it became real to many of us. Ask, ask some of the brothers. Ask some of the brothers and sisters for yourself. Many of them never thought they'd be sitting down reading and studying the Bible and really taking pleasure in the Word of God, e even in the King James Version, taking real pleasure in the Word of God. Some of us didn't want to even be called Christian. Some still probably don't want to be called Christian because the Gentiles have virtually ruined the brand. Why do you think the Bible says when he comes again he will have a new name? Why do you think the Bible says that everywhere his name is blasphemed, it's insulted? You understand? It was insulting for them to go around enslaving, raping, robbing people and then say, oh, we're doing this in Jesus' name, in the Lord's name. When we take everything away from you, you go to heaven and stuff like that. You'll get some of it back. <laughs> some people think great God will come from the sky, take away everything, and make everyone feel high. But if you know what life is worth, you will look for yours on earth. But the light is Christ. The, the, the Word is that logical light that illuminates and clears our darkness. So what is the contingency plan? The contingency plan, first of all, is to build up on our faith. Because as we build up on our faith and we come to this one mind, as it says, be ye of, what is it? We'll put this right here. Be ye of one mind, of one mind, of one thought. You see, we're still not of one mind. But notice this. We're one mind in the world, at least more so in the world, to make their system work than many of us, even as Rastafari, are of one mind in Rastafari. Think about it for a moment. If I pull this out right here. Y'all all know what this is. This is a dollar, right? It has some real value. You understand? Or at least, you know, you don't reject this, do you? So we see this, and it means something to us. Like if this is a $1 bill, and I say this is, not a, this is not a $1 bill, this is a $10 bill. You can get $10 worth from this $1 bill. Would you believe me? Not until you hear it on the news, right? Not until you read it in the newspaper or somewhere else. So you are of one mind with the world. You understand? That's why the scripture says, um, love not the world, nor the things of the world. Because if we do, we are at enmity with the Father. So we need to recognize the importance of faith, which builds trust. When we have trust, I mean, not superstitious trust, not hoodwinked, bamboozled trust, not like all these so-called prosperity preachers and past, I mean, they haven't, you know, we saw a story on TV, uh, it was about like how a lot of the preachers and pastors who are prosperity preachers and pastors, they are seeing for the first time in a long time, you know, their uh, profits decreasing. <laughs> well, I, I thought they had an inside track, an inside racket. How come they can't, shouldn't it be that theirs is going up, even when the world is going down, the world has to go to them, and when the world goes to them, say, how come, how come y'all are making more money, your people are richer than, than ever before, and then the preachers can say, well, let me tell you about my Jesus. The world already knows about their Jesus. You understand? The world doesn't know the true Christ, and that is our role and responsibility to proclaim him, to live in him, to demonstrate this. But how can we demonstrate him when we don't know him? How, what do we mean that we don't know him? We don't know him the way we should know him. As Christ says, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. You see, if we understand the power of God, we'll recognize the potential that's already in our hands right now and even the opportunity that we have even right now. So this particular message, I, I was intending on getting on this particular subject matter subjective, this particular subject matter, but it's very important to understand the connection between faith, trust, and working our system or God's system. Do you know that the Bible has an economy in it? The scriptures has an economy in it. Why do you think when people talk about, oh, well, you see the Jews, the Jews, the Jews know how to work that money, the Jews control this, so forth and so on. It's not really the Jews, it's not their complexion or whatever, but their faithful obedience in Torah you know what Christ says? <laughs> the scripture says that um, that 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 the 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 people of the world, you understand? You know, the children of the world 
in, in, in their hour show more wisdom than the children of the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the Jews who were, the European Jews who were grafted in, they're wild olives, you know, Khazar, so forth and so on. But they were grafted in, have showed more obedience, faithful obedience in their communities in spite of the occasional, you know, maybe a perverted rabbi or somebody molesting somebody or some other Jew on Jew crime here or there, so forth and so on. But in spite of that, they show still more faithfulness to their understanding of God's system and it works for them. They don't have to, even if the money were to crash right now, they still have more faith in, in their interpretation of God and in their, in their community, you understand, to survive the storm. Do we have that? What do we need to do so that we will have it? We're not dependent on their system. You understand? We're not dependent on their money but we are dependent on the Spirit of God as it's manifest in each of us as brothers and sisters working together. You see, the, the greatest thing, it's like the, um, the greatest thing is trust, is really trust. And we're not saying, oh, just trust me because I say so. No, but you have to trust from a renewed heart. You see, some, some folks say, oh, I don't trust all that religious talk. Of course, they have an unregenerated heart. You understand? I mean, I mean, they, we, we pray for them being born again to see the light. You understand? They don't trust even themselves. They don't trust, but they trust the devil. They trust the devil's system, even though they hear about so, so much corruption in this system. You would think people would just get up and run. You would think people would just say, I've had enough of this. I'm ready to get out of it. But they still trust. They hear about politicians doing all sort of crazy things. They hear about how the politicians give them kickback. The rich people are, are greedy and greedy and taking more stuff, so forth and so on. But that doesn't make them leave. They have so much trust and confidence. So, see, the key is faith. Babylon is a religion. Believing in Babylon is a religion, believe it or not. Babylon is a religion. Babylon is a, is a, is a way of life. They trust it. You see, if you were to take your money, and we've mentioned this before, if you would take the money and you were to go to, like, the store or something like that, and they said, oh, money ain't worth nothing no more, you probably would run out that store and go to another store. Because why? You just couldn't believe it. Why? Because you were believing the money is worth something. But then when we talk about the king of kings and we prove these things, people say, oh, I just can't believe that because <laughs> you're an unbeliever. And this is not going to segue, in a sense, to the next point that we want to touch on. But we'll probably, most likely, John will and go over this subject matter again. The first is the objective. The objective is the Amen. The objective is the Christ. The objective is the Word of God made manifest. Then the subjective is the Imnet. So the Amen is first, and the Imnet now is that part is almost like a magnet. You understand? Know like attract like. You see, when we are now attracted to the true God and the word of the true God and understanding and growing and, and, and acting in the true word of God, and, and the only way that, that can happen is through a, 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 a repentance, a, a, a change of mind. You understand? Know if one is still looking at things, in spite of all that they're learning, like look at people learn about New World Order, Secret Society, all these people are in bed with the devil and do devil rituals, and they still are <laughs> going after these things. It doesn't make them run from it. So there must be something that is attracting them, you understand, attracting them and keeping them stuck, keeping them stuck, and it's because of the new birth. There is the, not that regenerated heart. You know, those of you who have been unregenerated, in other words, those who, who have actually experienced a, 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 the process of being born again, even if you only have, have manifestations in slight ways, you recognize the difference. Things that you used to do, you don't do them anymore. And it's not like you really even just hate, 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 hate. I hate that. No, you were like, I used, to, I used to like doing that, but now I want to do that because something is different. You see, so some folks want to say, well, why don't we just get out of Babylon and go Ethiopia, go Africa? That, that could be very easily done. 
But one of the reasons I suspect that we just don't do it the way that we could and probably should and hopefully would do it is because you're saying if we have this much trouble with niggas right here, if people show a lack of love, love of God and Christ for one another, so much enmity, even claiming to be the same thing and of the same kind. It's like you hear Christians say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. And then they say, well, that person's a Christian too. Well, I don't know about that. My God, ain't that something? But are we much better than that? Are we really working together? Something, some, food to, some food for thought, actually. But trust is the key thing. After 9-11, they had to restore the trust. You know what I'm saying? They had to restore the trust. And by restoring the trust, they kept that system going along. You know what I'm saying? They kept that system. You hear folks saying, like, oh, well, it's the only system we got. What can we do? We got to make it work or we don't have nothing else. Look at the slaves. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was bad for us as the lost sheep when we were in chattel slavery. Now this this enslavement, this enslavement to the world and to the God of the world has actually become much, much worse. It's actually gone completely global and in a local, 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 a crazy way it has gone global. But if you can hear, there's a natural mystic that is blowing through the ear. My brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. Our time is real, real near. So shalom, stay tuned, more to come.